Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our coming King of glory. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this last Sunday of the church here is from our Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 25, verses 32 to 34. We read, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Here ends our text. Here we are again. The last Sunday of the church here. How quickly another year has passed by. And yet maybe it hasn't gone by as quickly as we wanted, having gone through a year filled with sickness and death. And yet the Lord, the Good Shepherd, has always been with us, helping us through this year, strengthening us, and keeping us firm in our faith as we wait for His final coming. And we know that we are one year closer to the coming of the Son of Man in His glory and our eternal life with Him. Our Gospel reading begins with the word, when. It's a time word, isn't it? When. And I don't see the word, if. In our text there, it doesn't say if the Son of Man comes in His glory, but when He does. Of course, our human perspective of time is so limited compared to our eternal God. So we are reminded in Scripture in 2 Peter chapter 3, Beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Time is not irrelevant to God. On the contrary, He is purposely providing as much time as possible before the big when happens. He is long-suffering because He does, doesn't want any to perish. He wants all to repent before the big separation occurs. As much as God doesn't want any to perish, there will be those on the left, the goats, who do not heed the call to faith, those who rejected the Savior Jesus Christ. Our gospel reminds us today that there will be a public judgment on that day when Jesus comes. It will be for all people. When that day will come, no one knows. But again, it is a when and not an if. The big picture that our gospel describes is that the preparations for this day, that is the making of the eternal inheritance of heaven itself, was made for you from the foundations of the world. And don't let those two words slip by you without grasping the comfort of these two words. For God in His infinite view of time already prepared your eternal inheritance for you from the foundation of the world. And this day, when you enter into this inheritance, has also been planned for you. It's not a, a, a if, but it is again a when. Scripture tells us when heaven was created for you, but it doesn't tell us a day when that judgment day will occur, when you will physically enter into it as his sheep. But we don't have to worry about the when, but we just continue to run with endurance the race before us, set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. So we hear in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Again, Peter says in his first epistle how we are to run this race. Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. That describes what Jesus says about the sheep, doesn't it? For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, 
Be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an, an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus gives us much understanding of, of what the judgment day will be like. He does so that we may ha have more diligence, that we will run the race with more diligence to make sure of our election that we will be his sheep on his right hand and not the goats on the left. There are three main actions that take place on Judgment Day. First, all the nations will be gathered together for this public hearing, and there will be no recounts. Second, those on the king's right hand will hear the command to come and enter into the, into the eternal inheritance that has been prepared for you, the kingdom of heaven. Why? Well, there is no fraud or irregularity in the sheep on the right hand, the righteous. And thirdly, those cursed goats on the left will be told to depart into eternal fire, into everlasting punishment. Why? Because there again is no runoff. What Jesus says is final. So, we begin, first of all, with how the judgment day begins with the coming of the Son of Man in His glory and all the angels with Him. It'll be a complete gathering of all the nations, all the people together before Him. What a sight that will be. Of course, the devil and all the evil angels won't be present for they are already condemned and already suffering eternal punishment in the fire of hell. No one will escape this day. There will be no taking a sick day or a vacation day. Every man, woman, and child who is born into this world will be present, and they will be divided into two groups. Well, this seems like a monumental task to us, for we're just trying to count all the legal votes in our past presidential election, which is again proving to be a daunting task, full of human, and it appears, machine manipulation, and, and again, software glitches. Thousands of votes were just discovered in Georgia, that were not counted. Then there are the affidavits of people who witnessed the shredding of ballots and the manufacturing of ballots. Will the recounts be accurate or just a close approximation? Such is the struggle our nation is going through in our time and place, in our when. But we can be absolutely sure that Jesus will correctly divide all people into the sheep and the goats. There won't be any need for a recount. For Jesus won't just won't get anything wrong. He won't stop in the middle and say, oh, you on the left, I got you in the wrong group. Come over here to the right. Or vice versa, you, you were on the right. Oh, my mistake. Go back over to where the goats are. Jesus doesn't make mistakes. His verdict will be final. There will be no appeals or no need to sway the court of public opinion, for all the public will be present and hear the verdict. Each soul each soul will hear Jesus say either of these two words, come or depart. It's that simple. For Jesus knows the hearts of all people. He knows who they voted for. He knows who believed and confessed and served him in their lives. And this will be the demarcation day for all eternity. From this day forth, there will be one group who receives eternal life and one group who receives eternal punishment. Jesus' certification is final and there will be no recounts. Secondly, who will Jesus judge and certify first? Well, this is good news for the sheep of his pasture. For the believers in Christ will not have to wait very long to hear the, the invitation to come and enter into the kingdom prepared for them. And notice that Jesus is called their king. He doesn't, he's not called the king of the goats. For a king requires loyal uh, obedience and believing subjects, and none are found among the goats. He has no relationship to the goats. No, he is the king of the sheep. So the sheep hear right away a joyful invitation to inherit and receive the kingdom, prepared for them, again, from the foundation of the world. They are called blessed of the Father, blessed by the Father. For in this life the sheep received faith, in Jesus Christ. 
And they knew Jesus' Father as their dear Father. And they knew Him that, that He was the one who provided for all of their needs of body and soul. And for that very reason, they are called the righteous, for they have been provided with the robe of righteousness, Jesus' righteousness, through faith. Again, we've been hearing from Romans chapter 1, verse 17, these past Sundays, this very, very important verse, the just will live by faith. So also, Philippians 3, verse 9, tells of the righteousness that the sheep receive from God by faith. And Paul describes this righteousness in his very own personal life. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. So it should not surprise us that on the judgment day, there is no record of the wrongs of the sheep. Why? Because, well, there is no record. It doesn't exist. There is no fraud to report. There are no irregularities in the lives of the sheep. Why? Because, well, they are righteous. They are righteous in Jesus Christ. On the other hand, of course, in our presidential election, can we say the same? Is there no fraud in our presidential election? Is there no ballot harvesting? Well, that's not possible in this sinful world. But there's nothing to hide on that final judgment day. There is nothing done in secret, no blocking of the windows. And Jesus is quick to supply the evidence of the living faith of his sheep. It is not what saved them, of course, for Jesus' death and resurrection alone saved them, saved the whole world. What Jesus does, however, is provide evidence of their faith. This is the gift of salvation that they received and the life that they were living in this faith. Jesus describes their new lives led by the Holy Spirit. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. But when did we do these things for you? The sheep asked Jesus. There is that word when again. In that time period in the lives of the sheep, when they were living, that's when the when occurred. A when of fruitful living. There was a gaining of talents, as we heard Last week in our parable of the talents, there was a supplying of oil of faith to the lamps of the virgins, as we heard two weeks ago. Christians lived their lives in lives of faith, depending on Jesus Christ for all. And Jesus tells all the world on Judgment Day that when they did it to the least of these, his brethren, they did it to him. Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Their acts of love did not go unnoticed by Jesus, for they were done in faithful service to him. Loving Jesus' brethren is loving Jesus, for the body of Christ is one with Jesus, who is the head of the body. And there is no accusation of any sins of omission, even though the sheep, sheep did not live perfect lives, for they are made perfect in Jesus, their shepherd. So Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. No fraud, no regularities, only perfection in Jesus Christ. Thirdly, well, we've talked about the sheep on the right. Now we talk about the goats on the left. Whereas the sheep heard not a single word of wrongdoing and not a single sin was listed, for there were none, there was no fraud, not so with the goats. Their sins are on full display as evidence of their unrighteousness. The goats stand on their own without the righteousness of Christ to cover them. Their, their stain-filled lives of unrighteousness is detestable in the eyes of Jesus. And they must depart from his sight and go where all the cursed go to everlasting punishment, to everlasting fire. Hebrews eleven six tells us why 
they could never stand on their own without condemnation. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Impossible to please God without faith. But when did we see you? The goats cry out and not give you food or drink or visit you. It is the cry of the cursed. When? When? When there was no faith in Jesus Christ, there was no when. There was no living for Jesus in loving his brethren. And again, Jesus' word is final. He certifies their eternal faith with the order to depart from his presence. There are no words of reconciliation or second chances. That time has passed. There are no runoffs. There is only eternal punishment that never ends. And that is a sobering thought for us, his sheep, as we live our lives in this, in this imperfect world, as we run the race of endurance to remain diligent, to watch, and to remain faithful unto death to receive the crown of life. So, we've heard about recounts. We've heard about fraud, irregularities, and runoffs in our presidential election. These are the things that we presently deal with in this world and try to get right to the best of our abilities as much as possible. We never will, but there is no need to worry that God will make a mistake on Judgment Day. We can be assured of that. He chose His sheep. He elected them. He predestined them. And he calls them as sons by Jesus Christ him, to himself. He's done it all for his sheep. Jesus has gained our inheritance. Heaven is prepared. And we're just waiting for the when. For the big when. When the trumpet sounds and, and the angels come with him in glory. While we're waiting, we wait serving the least of his brethren. Serving them with the love that we have been first served with by the death and the resurrection of our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, listen to the, to the beautiful words of the big picture of time that Paul, Paul proclaims to all believers as he opens his epistle to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. No recounts on Judgment Day. It will be a quick procedural, come, you blessed of my Father, come, inherit the, the kingdom prepared for you since the foundations of the world. No recounts, just refreshing, eternal rest. Joy as resurrected, righteous sheep in the Savior, Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.